Hello there everyone, it's Carol here from the Crafty Emporium. I'm here again with a, another stash buster. I've, I've got too much um, scraps and I need to use them up. So, that's my pile that I'm going to use today. And I've made these little photo frame pockets. Okay, and what I've done is I've put my tea cards in there. So I'm going to show you how to make these and I've also used the little leaves that I created in a previous video with the circle punch. Um, so I've already gone through some scraps and created some frames already and I've just put them on this ring to keep them together and safe. Now you need a fairly firmish thick paper or thin card. All right, so I've got a piece here on the back. So this was a piece of um, scrapbook paper. So I'm going to use this. Now, I can't give you the actual measurement because one of the problems that you've got with using the punch, which is what I'm going to do, you can't guarantee that if you cut this out to the size of the actual photo frame that you can't that you want to make you can't always guarantee that you're going to get the hole in the right spot so I like to punch it out first now I've got a two inch square punch here you can do them whatever size you want you might even actually have some dies that you could use now if you've got dies you can cut out the size of the frame ready and then put the dies because it's easier to see that you've got it in the right position but for the actual punch I'm not cutting out the shape until I've done the punch now I will tell you in a little minute what sort of size I've done um, but I, I just do it a prox and I don't do them all the same either so I'm going to punch my square out from there and I'm going to show you in a moment what you can do with those now you can use your paper trimmer if you want, but I'm just going to use my scissors. And I want about a quarter of an inch on this side, this side, and what will be the top. And I want it longer at the bottom. So roughly a quarter of an inch-ish. Let's just cut all of that off. And then you could line it up using the square on your trimmer to make sure that you have got it square but I'm just I'm cheating and just doing it with my scissors and then I want about a quarter of an inch -ish on that side and I want the same at the top okay So as you can see, I've got all sorts of different shapes and sizes punched out. Um, so some are small, some are large, um, but at least I've got several made up that will, can suit any kind of size of project that you want to put inside your little photo frame pocket. I just want to square that up a little bit, because that's a tad skew if. There we go. And I'm going to use my walnut stain and I'm going to use my little eyeshadow applicator because trying to get my dibby dabby dooby inside of there to ink it up is going to be quite difficult. So this again is where this little eyeshadow applicator comes in quite handy. That's that now all inked up. Now I've got some scraps of um, glassine bags, but you could use tracing paper, you could use plastic bags, you could use cellophane bags that you might have received something in. And you can either do these as a single pocket or a double pocket. Single pocket's easy. All you're going to do is just cut out around the overall shape and then glue it onto the back, but leave the top edge open. For the double pocket, I've got a piece of glassine here that I've just folded in half. And all I'm going to do is place some glue, and I'm just using PVA for this. And I'm just going to place some glue along the three sides. And then this way I end up with a double pocket.
and then I'm going to place the folded edge along this bottom edge down here and then I can trim off the excess Now I'm going to trim it just fractionally, fractionally longer at that top edge there so that I've got something to get hold of to be able to get into the pocket area. And so I've now got, it looks like that. And then I'm just going to place glue down the two sides and I only want a thin line of glue, so that's why I'm using this little contraption. Because my others would let out too much glue, and then I can fold that back on itself. Now you might have glassine bags that are the correct size for the back of your little photo frame. And I've now got a double pocket, so I've got a pocket there and I've got a pocket in between the two pieces of glassine as well so I've created a double pocket with that one I'm then going to ink up around the four sides and I can use my my dibby dabby dooby where's my ink gone And I ink it after I've glued the glassine bag on so that if there is a little bit of the glassine showing on the edge then at least I've caught it with the ink which helps it to to blend in a little bit better okay the other thing that I've got is um, a date stamp you know, one of those old-fashioned it's like playing post offices isn't it ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk what that was all about but there you go so I'm just going to date stamp it and it's a little bit higgledy piggledy but I don't mind that and then I'm going to put some leaves on the ones that we punched out from the circle punches or using the circle punches I think I might go for a JD green on this one I don't want them too big. Let's just tip them all out. Let's have a look. Oh, with the little one there. Little one there. What's that one? Oh, another little one. And I like to try and do them in twos and threes. Let's do three. Let's do a different coloured one. And then I'm going to display them at the top up here. So I'm going to put some glue in that top corner and I'm going to put that green one on. That green one right there. So it's going over onto the frame. Now I could ink these up as well. But just for time, I'm not going to. One that way. And then I got these flowers, these little tiny flowers, off a lady on Etsy. I will try, because I've had them a while now, I will try and find out um, who she was. Um, they're so pretty, look. Aren't they cute? I mean, I've got a selection of different flowers from it, and some slightly bigger ones as well, so that I could make my own up. Um really pretty so uh, yeah I'll try and find out who she was um, but it was definitely on Etsy that I got them I only wanted one of you I'm just going to trim that stalk off now I know that PVA glue probably isn't quite strong enough 
to hold that flower in place so I'm just going to dab a little bit of glossy accents on there and put my little flower on okay now then next step was I used my cigarette cards which is a digital kit that I've got in my Etsy store and I'm going to cut some of these out and I think that this thistle one oh no that pink one would look quite pretty wouldn't it so I'm going to cut it up close and then I can trim off that corner to make like a tag shape I've got a tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny hole punch. Um, don't know what size it is, don't know what make it is. Oh, Crafts 2, it says at the bottom. Um, and then I'm just going to punch a tiny little hole in there. And then I'm going to add some baker's twine. that down and then this can either sit in the front so that you can see the image go in so you can see the image here or you can put it in the pocket at the back And because it's got the glass in front it sort of gives a hint of an image in there now you could cut pieces of paper or card that would fit directly inside of that put it in and then you can see the window and you could actually position an image on that piece of card that you've put in so that you know that when you remove the card right on the back of it put it back in the image is going to be in the window itself so i think that those have ended up um quite cute like a bit of cute now and again so yeah really enjoyed making those and i'm going to do some more um i'm going to go on now to show you what you can actually do with the squares that we've punched out of the center of here so we're not wasting anything see you in a second With those little squares that we've got left over, I'm going to show you how to make a paper, paper clip. Right, so I've got my two inch square here and I've inked it up already. I'm going to spin it over to the back. Now I've cut a little template to be a little bit smaller. Where's my ruler? So this is now Ooh, about three quarters of an inch wide and I want it sat about there so that I've got an even border around three sides and then I'm just going to draw around that and I just want to mark this top edge I don't want to draw a full line because I don't want to cut all the way across okay so can you see what I've I've drawn there and now what I'm going to do is with a sharp knife and on some board now you can use a ruler to cut through I'm just doing it by hand I just need to make sure that I don't slip otherwise I'm going to chop my fingers off and that wouldn't be a pretty video would it so there we go so I've now got that effect okay so if I get my journal what I'm in the process of making there's a page at the back here there we go and so I'm going to put some glue 
around all four sides. And then it can either be attached at the top of the page or spin it round and attach it at the bottom. So I'm going to attach mine at the top. And it means then that a little journaling card can just slot under there. And it's just enough to hold that in place. Not totally, you know, like a proper paper clip. It's not that strong. So it can only be something small and lightweight that can sit underneath it. But if you imagine that that was the page that way up and I'd put it on upside down, then it could sit in there quite comfortably. And then I could decorate this little piece up with some flowers and some leaves again to just make it look pretty. So I've got two more of the paper paper clips here. This one's already cut out. So these need to be cut out of sort of, you know, fairly firm card. And then I've got another piece punched out of paper. All right, so this is quite thin because I'm going to use some magnets and I want, I don't, if I use a thick card, the magnets aren't strong enough to be able to pull towards each other. So if I use paper, it's got a better uh, chance of doing that. So if I flip that over, Place my little magnet on the bottom. So can you see where it's down that bottom end down there? And I'm going to put a tiny piece of microport over the top to just hold it in place. I would actually glue it as well, but just for speed for the video, I'm just going to micropore it. Okay. And then I'm going to glue these two pieces together. So I'm going to sit this one on top of that, right? So the magnet's on the back side here. And I'm going to sit those two together like that. And I'm going to place glue around the four sides. And sit one on top of the other. And then I should be able to see how I, I just hovered it over and it automatically went to where it needs to be. So now I can get another piece of micropore and put that over the top. And then I can glue that to my page just in the same way as I did before by gluing around the four sides and it just means that this will now lift up but it's magnetized and it means that when I put something inside of there it will hold it tight because of the magnet all right so those are my paper paper clips and as I say you can decorate these up ink them up um, and you can have them that way up or that way up there's one thing that I said that I would do, which was give you some measurements of these, which I didn't. Um, so just to give you a rough idea. So this one is mm, two and an eighth inches wide by two and five eighths inches long. This one is just under two inches wide by two and a half inches long. And this one just under two inches wide and just two and five eighths inches long so you can see I've done them various sizes um, because I didn't measure them out but if you're using dies then you might be advised to cut out one of your squares first so that you can see roughly what size you would then need to trim your papers down to so that's what I've made with today's scraps is the little photo pockets and um, a paper paper clip thanks very much for joining me and I hope to see you all again really soon bye for now